Hello everyone, this is chapter 7's lesson. So previously we talked about how and why Japan reached a war in the Asia Pacific. In this video we're going to see and explore the reasons why Japan was defeated in World War II. So this is uh, like chapter 5 when we talk about why Germany lost World War II. You might see some similarities, but there are also crucial differences okay, because we are talking about different countries and different situations here. Okay, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain two kinds of factors. I'll explain a bit more what they are that tell you why Japan was defeated. Okay, so the big question underlying this factor is, uh, this is like a 12 mark essay question, okay, that they may ask you, uh, how far was the def Do you agree that the defeat of Japan could only be brought about by the dropping of the atomic bomb? And to decide whether you agree or disagree the statements, you need to know what are some of the, uh, what was the situation then, okay? What was the war situation? And you also need to know what were the reasons Japan lost. So were there other reasons that may defeat Japan without using the atomic bomb? So that's why uh, you can see how this question can is ultimately linked to the factors on why Japan's lost the war. Okay, so this is the key thing we're gonna explore in this lesson, why Japan lost. So some facts on the atomic bomb for you. Okay, so some people will, the two school of thought is uh, Japan was not going to be defeated easily and therefore the bomb had to be dropped. But some people will explain that there are a lot of reasons why Japan is going to, was going to lose the war and therefore dropping the bomb was unnecessary. Okay, because they caused so much suffering because Japan was had many reasons to be defeated without even using the bomb. Okay, so what are some of these reasons? Let's look at them. Okay, so a bit of background. Uh, previous chapter six, we talked about how did the war break up, but we never really tell you what happened. So basically, there were not a lot of people challenging Japan. Japan's invasion was very easy. Okay, because mainly your enemies were fighting the war in Europe and Japan had an easy time conquering these territories, including Singapore, okay? However, they were eventually defeated because of a few reasons, mm -hmm. but mainly we are looking at their own mistakes as well as the strength of the USA. So chapter five, we talk about Germany's mistake as well as the strength of the USA and the allies. So they are a bit of, it's a bit similar in that aspect. Okay, but the specific mistake is different. Okay, so there are five main reasons why Japan was defeated in USA. Just now we already mentioned, dropping the bomb was one very decisive reason that ultimately defeated Japan. But there were four other reasons, okay, that may explain why Japan was defeated. And therefore, maybe we don't have to use and drop the atomic bomb. Okay, so let's look at what are these five factors. Okay. This one's again, follow your textbook structure and your notes. Okay, uh, some blanks in your notes for you to fill up the words in red. Okay, so the first reason like why Germany was defeated was because America, which were the main force, the allies, were too strong. Okay, so we know that America was the biggest economy, produced a lot of goods. Produce a lot of goods means what? You can produce a lot of military goods as well. Can produce a lot of guns, can produce a lot of tanks, ships, planes to fight the war. So America was way, way, way much stronger, way more richer than Germany and Japan. So they can fight both countries and still probably uh, produce more weapons than them combined. Okay. So the US, besides being a richer country, they had many workers. Okay. They were able to overtake Japan and uh, in the production of military armaments. You know, uh, when Japan attacked USA and bombed Pearl Harbor, it seems like a very devastating attack, but to the USA, they can replace whatever they lost very quickly, okay? All right, and Japan was able to protect its merchant fleets from attack by US submarines. The Allies targeted Japanese merchant ships. These are adverse impact. So we talk about why America was so rich, right? We also need to understand why Japan was not as rich. 
So although Japan has a very big empire and should be very prosperous, full of resources, but the empire, the resources is all over the empire. They might not always be able to be transported and reach Japan. So imagine I I conquer Singapore, I conquer Malaya, I get a lot of uh, tin and rubber. Okay, I want to use it in Japan to produce some sort of weapons. I need to ship it back to Japan, but I sometimes it may not be before it can be shipped back to Japan, it might be targeted by US submarines and ships halfway there. If they attack Brunei, get loads of oil. Yes, oil is very important for the Japanese war machinery, but if you produce a lot of oil but you cannot transport it to the rest of the empire, then it's pretty much useless also. Okay, so Japan's economy was hindered because the US keeps sabotaging basically its uh, supply chain. Okay, so we are talking about can think about supply chain, okay? The supply chain was basically disrupted. Supply chain basically means the transport of their essential goods. Huh? Okay, so including food was cut off, okay? And US factories were out of risk of Japanese bombing. So Japan was a vulnerable target for USA to sabotage, but Unlike the Japanese, the US factories producing all your weapons and all this were far out of reach for Japan. So US was relatively safe. So also explain why US economy was so strong and remained very strong. Okay, so again, uh, USA was very rich, very strong industrial capability. How does this help to defeat Japan? You have more war machinery. You can spike a longer war and until Japan becomes crippled. Okay. So they can compete with the Japan easily and fight Germany in Europe at the same time. That's how strong the US was. Okay. So it will ultimately weaken Japan. Okay. All right. The US, like I said, although faced a little bit of setback at Pearl Harbor, okay, it remained very strong. We are talking about military capability now. Okay. It lost, they lost a few ships at Pearl Harbor. Okay. But they were able to bounce back and became very strong. So if you look at this map, you can see a lot of fighting. You can see a Japanese empire is very big, but you also can see the blue arrows that America was able to strike back very quickly and very fast and eventually reaching Japan, dropping the two of the new bombs to end the war. Okay. All right. So one of the examples you can use to show that Japanese military was very strong was this example of the do little red uh it sounds very ironic because the do little okay uh didn't do very little <laughs> all right excuse my pun okay so after pearl harbor was bombed the usa wanted to retaliate okay wanted to take revenge on japan very quickly so what did they do they managed to send out they want to bomb japan to show them who's boss because you bomb usa and they bomb you back okay so what they decided to do was to draw the bombs, they need to use the planes to fly, but the plane was, uh, the range was not enough to reach Japan. So they decided, okay, we won't fly and you turn back, but I will fly, draw the bomb and then land in China. So it extended the range of the plane. And it shows that the US, although was attacked, they were very capable of staging a counter attack. And it, also boosted the morale of the Jap of the Americans and it shows that Japanese were not as invincible as they seem. We learned in chapter six, they were honest, Japan was on the road, right? Defeating Russia, China, defeating Britain later. Okay, so the USA was able to push back and give Tokyo a little bit of pressure. Okay. So you will see other wars like the Battle of the Coral Sea. Okay, uh, Coral Sea, in case you're wondering where this is, uh, this is quite far here, Coral Sea. We are looking at Coral Sea. So it's quite far from Japanese, at the borders of the Japanese Empire. So this is also when the Japanese failed to push on further. They were wanted to go on further south into Australia, but they failed because they were stopped by the US at this Coral Sea area. Okay. So they wanted to control many people to attack Australia, but they were intercepted. And ultimately, at this point, they defeated and the Japanese 
empire stopped growing. Okay, so it shows the military might. Both sides, okay, were very strong, very skilled using the ships, okay. But, okay, eventually, Japan withdrew from the Battle of Coral Sea. Okay, and the Japanese never got to Australia. Okay, another battle that showed that the Americans were very strong was the Battle of Midway. Um, so it was basically a naval battle and the Japanese wanted to sink and uh, uh, wanted to capture these airfields in the Pacific Ocean and sink the American aircraft carriers, but they found the trap and they were defeated, annihilated basically by the American Navy here. Okay, do you need to know the details like they have to attack airfields and what? Uh, not necessary, but you probably want to know that it, the name of the battle, Battle of Midway, where the Japanese Navy was basically slaughtered, okay, and it severely weakened, and it shows the American power, uh, Americans' ability to defeat Japan, and it also shows that Japan was severely weakened here and on the path of defeat after that. Okay, so that's how you can explain why Japan was defeated. All right, okay, we'll skip this one. Okay, so although in the Battle of Midway, basically all you need to know is they surprised the Japanese. The Japan, the Japanese wanted to attack America, but America basically set up some sort of ambush. Okay, you can write down in your note. They set up ambush and surprised the Japanese, and the Japanese lost very severely. They lost a lot of aircraft carrier, they lost all of their pilots. So it also shows the military strength of America. Okay. America also was very strong in terms of the tactics. And one of the tactics you can remember is island hopping strategy. Uh, so let me show you what is the island hopping strategy. Okay. Okay. Let me show you a map. Okay. So island hopping if you look at the map here, island hopping re mainly refers to, there are many islands located in Southeast Asia. So basically the American had a strategy, okay, to take over one piece of island, uh, build a base, then attack the next island. So that's why it's called island hopping. And eventually they want to hop, 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 take over island by island, eventually reach Japan mainland. Okay, so that was the strategy. And it proved to be very effective in pushing the Japanese back. So that's all you need to know. Okay, the tactic of island hopping also shows that American military was very strong and contributed to the defeat of Japan. Okay. So they built a lot of bases and with these bases, you can, you know, uh, fly your planes and capture more islands. So step by step. Okay. Okay, so the Japanese factories, okay, was sustained were bombed by American bombs continuously, ultimately even crippling more of the Japanese economy. Okay, and this contributed to the defeat of Japan. Okay, they stalled Japan's advance. Japan's morale was also crushed because they faced very stiff resistance by the Americans. <laughs> okay, now uh, another reason that shows why the American was so strong, the economy was so strong, uh, this is a bit of a very interesting point. Is because the allies okay actively encourage the women to participate in the war effort. Okay, we talk about how the American factories the uh, were so strong and producing so many weapons, so, uh, so many raw materials to fight the war. And one reason is because the countries like America they encourage women to work, and this is a very big contrast to say like traditional Japan where they they, they traditionally do not expect women to work and want them to stay at home. Okay, so all this contribute to the USA being a very prosperous country and a very powerful country to fight Japan. Okay, so I mentioned this already. Japan, they mainly have a domestic role for women, unlike the US. Okay, and when you allow women to work, okay, you can produce more war goods. You have a stronger economy, stronger military to fight a long war with Japan, unlike uh, Japan was unable to do so. Okay. So you may start to wonder uh, if Japan was so strong, uh, sorry, if America was so strong, Japan was unable to fight a long war anyway, 
do we have to drop the bomb? If we never drop the bomb, perhaps Japan will still lose in the long run if America choose to fight a long war. So if the question asks you whether a Tommy bomb was necessary, perhaps you can explain that because it's so uneven. America is so much more stronger than Japan. You never have to drop the bomb because dropping a bomb is a bit of an overkill. Okay, so this is one way you can explain. Okay, let's look at the other factors of why Japan was defeated. Okay, let's look at factor two. Were the Japanese as inhumane as the Allied powers made them be? Okay, all right. So I'm gonna skip over this a little bit. Okay, because it's not directly relevant. Okay, so let's look at why did Japan fail to defend its very vast empire. So the main reason is because the empire was too big and you did not have enough funds, you did not have enough resources, you did not have enough manpower to defend. Imagine you have such a big territory, right? A big territory to defend it, you probably need a lot more soldiers to defend the very big borders. Okay, so that was a problem that Japan had. It was so big, USA could attack it from basically virtually anywhere. So you had to defend a lot of places and you diluted your forces. And it will ultimately prove to be very costly and draining for Japan. Okay, and when Japan take over a place, say like Singapore, okay, there will always be strong opposition. There'll be people who resist Japanese rule. So you cannot say like, oh, I took over the land so I can send all the troops and take over the next land. Okay, I need to leave soldiers in territories to defend those territories. I cannot send the soldiers to go and fight America. I must defend and uh, watch out for the locals, for example. So all this will or go some way to drain Japan's resources. Imagine uh, people may be trying to backstab you and reclaim the territory anytime. So all this weakened Japan. Japan was unable to hold on to all its place very easily. Okay. So that's number two. Okay. The empire was too big. It's very hard to defend such a big empire. Okay. Number three, the desire of the allies to secure a big victory at Asia Pacific. So why did this contribute to the defeat of Japan, okay? So the Japanese, okay, when they were a bit desperate, they were finding the war a bit tough, they decided to use a lot of uh, very scary tactics like kamikaze, suicide bombers, basically, okay? And all this actually made the allies even more determined to fight, okay? Because they were very concerned that, you know, if I fight a very long war with Japan, right, if I, they become very desperate, they're going to uh, fight even harder. So I want to give them a very quick knockout punch, knock them out so that uh, fight a very short war. And when you want to fight a short war, it also motivates America to send more troops to quickly take out Japan so that Japan cannot counterattack. Okay? So Japan tried to resist the Allies using forced labors from all its vast territories. Okay, however, the forced labors were not often very useful because many people, they were overworked. They were worked under very harsh conditions and they felt ill. Okay, okay. And when the POWs and these workers were treated so harshly and aggressively, what's going to happen? Okay, many of the people, including the Americans and the British, they'll be thinking they, the Japanese are torturing all these POWs. I need to save these POWs. And to save these POW, I must fight the war harder, more aggressively, defeat Japan, and save all these people that have been captured so far. Okay? Okay, I mentioned the kamikaze fighters. Okay, led to a lot of heavy casualties. Okay, so the main thing about this factor is it strengthened the resolve of the allies. So, Rather than say, oh, you know, let's take it slow and easy, they realized that Japan was a very, very scary country and they were torturing their fellow countrymen, the POWs. So they made them more motivated to fight and fight more bravely, fight more effectively to defeat the Japanese. So it gave them a lot of morale, basically, to fight the Japanese. And morale is very important huh? because if you're not motivated to fight, you may not win the battle, okay? So a bit more on kamikaze, 
Okay, last two points. Now we look at Allied victory in Europe. This is quite straightforward. When the Allies, the British, the US defeated Germany in Europe, how did this contribute to the defeat of Japan? Okay. All right. So when Japan was starting out in the war, it was very successful because countries like Britain, they were very distracted. Japan had a very easy way fighting all its way to Singapore, all, the, all its way close to Australia because the Allies were so distracted. But after Hitler, after Germany is out of the picture, okay, the Allies just have to focus their attention on Japan. Okay? And when you imagine everyone focus the attention on Japan, Japan will be under, be under tremendous pressure. The military may not hold up. They might be defeated more easily because they can concentrate the force to attack Japan. Japan is unlikely to succeed. Okay? Okay, so the Allies eventually defeated Japan and they were so successful that Japan had no chance but to surrender unconditionally, meaning that they have to surrender and they cannot negotiate. Okay? All right, so the people, just now we mentioned, uh, they were allies were very motivated to defeat Japan. In the countries, the citizens themselves were also very motivated and wanted to defeat, defeat Japan very badly because of you know Japanese atrocities committed to POW to take revenge of Pearl Harbor and so on. Okay. Okay. Even Stalin eventually joined the war to pressure Japan. After Stalin took care of Germany, reached Berlin, uh, remember the Japan's traditional enemy was the Russians also. So Stalin was also able to come in at the last minute and pressure Japan and ultimately pressure Japan into surrendering before the Russians can attack Japan. Okay, so all this pressure from the Allies, including the Russians, helped to defeat Japan because the defeat of Germany deprived Japan of a major partner and they were allowed to focus their planning, their resources, to concentrate and defeat Japan all the way until they are surrendered and defeated. Okay, so this is a very straightforward point. Last point, how did the atomic bomb defeat Japan? Also another straightforward point. Basically, you just need to know, okay, it's a very crucial factor because Japan, although was facing a lot of defeats, okay, it was still very resistant, okay. The USA wanted to show off this bomb also, okay, to defeat Japan because the Russians at the time right, was starting to become an enemy of the, the US. So the US also decided, okay, good chance to show off and flex my power, okay. Okay, let me just go a bit more forward towards Japan. So what happened with the atomic bomb was, okay, um, they dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. Okay, they killed a lot of people and Japan uh, did not surrender and they dropped another bomb on Nagasaki. Okay, so the Japanese finally surrendered. Okay, so why did this contribute to Japanese to surrender? You just need to know the weapon was too strong. It shows that the Allies were too powerful. The Japanese government, the emperor decided, you know, I don't want to fight anymore because I don't want a third atomic bomb to drop. So Japan ultimately decided to surrender and they were war finally ended. Okay. And you might wonder, just now we mentioned that the Japanese was never so strong to begin with. America was so strong. Do you really have to overkill with such a strong bomb? The answer is perhaps, okay, because remember, the Japanese were very desperate also. They were not refusing to surrender. They were sending things like kamikaze. They were torturing your prisoners of war. You might not want to take so long to drag out a war. So the USA ultimately decided to drop this atomic bomb and end the war very quickly. And yes, it proved to be very successful in forcing Japan to surrender and end the war. Okay, so from all the destruction, it caused Japan to surrender and be defeated. Okay? Yeah, that's about it. So the rest are just some sources. 
Okay, so some of the sample question, some of the things you might want to know is, are you able to explain external factor? Are you able to explain why the USA, why the things happening in Europe, such as the ending of the war, why were they able to contribute to Japan being defeated? You might also want to explain internal factors. How did Japan's own weakness, okay, such as with its strategy, such as with its very overextended big empire, how did it contribute to Japan's defeat in the war? Okay, and how did the bomb contribute to the defeat of the war? All right. With that, that's the end of chapter seven. Please feel free, uh, please do read the notes uh, in more detail and try to understand what the five factors mean. When you understand the five factors, then you memorize the five factors, you are able to, you'll be able to write out a more thorough, a more um, detailed essay to help you score better. All right. That's all for chapter seven. And that's all for your sec three syllabus. And we'll see you in sec four. All right. Bye-bye.